Welcome grade 11 learners to another episode of Life Sciences. Guys, hope you're ready for term 2. Today we're looking at photosynthesis. We're going to get to looking at where photosynthesis takes place, the importance of it, and the actual process that's involved in photosynthesis, and how that leads on to the next section. So during the segment here, we're going to look at the process, and then we're going to move on to some questions. So you guys need to pay careful attention so that you can answer those questions in the next segment. So let's get straight into what we've got for today. So guys, we're having a very quick overview of photosynthesis. And essentially, if you recollect from grade 8 and 9, photosynthesis is a physiological process that occurs in plants. What do we mean by that? We mean that it's a process in which the plant is able to produce what we actually need for our existence, starch, which is a kind of carbohydrate. So what we're interested in today is looking at how photosynthesis occurs in the leaf and what is actually required for the process of photosynthesis for it to produce what we actually need at the end, starch or glucose. Let's discuss some of the important terminology today. Guys, I know that you've looked at these terms before. Let's contextualize this into the concept of photosynthesis. We've got to discuss what autotrophs are. And if you recollect from grade 8 and 9, we refer to organisms that are capable of manufacturing their own food as autotrophs. And all autotrophs should be able to photosynthesize. And that means they are able to carry out the process of photosynthesis to produce food. However, guys, not every organism is capable of photosynthesizing. Lots of them uh, do not have chloroplasts, and hence we refer to those organisms that cannot photosynthesize or produce their own food as heterotrophs. So we're going to look at predominantly what autotrophs are and how they produce the food for the heterotrophs. The site of photosynthesis is very important and we refer to that organelle in the plant as the chloroplast and we've got to look at what the chloroplast has that produces, that is able to produce the glucose and that is the chlorophyll and we're going to discuss the pigment present and where it's present. And eventually we'll, what we are very important and concerned about is the production of an energy carrier molecule and how that occurs when ADP plus active phosphate joins to form ATP. So essentially that is the terminology that we're looking at. So let's get into the process, the significance of photosynthesis so that you can understand the concept within what we've been talking about. So guys, what are the key concepts that we need to look at? We need to look at photosynthesis being an autotrophic process. What do we mean by this? We mean that organisms that are capable of manufacturing their own food are, able, are called autotrophs. So plants and plant-like organisms can make their energy from sunlight to produce glucose and that process is referred to as photosynthesis and not necessarily only plants are able to photosynthesize we've got certain microorganisms that have chloroplast in them and they're able to photosynthesize using energy from the sun to produce your essential carbohydrates or glucose the second thing that we need to look at is look at how carbohydrates are stored in their bodies and essentially we know that plants are able to convert the radiant energy into glucose and that glucose is quite an active form, it's unstable, and hence it needs to be converted into some molecule in which the plants can rely on that as a reserve energy source. And essentially what this diagram shows is that we know that the leaf is an important organ in the process of photosynthesis, and for that we need light, and the byproducts that are produced are glucose, and we've got oxygen that also is released, and for the process of photosynthesis we see that carbon dioxide and both water are needed. So we're going to look at this in greater detail. So guys, what does photosynthesis mean? Let's break up the word. Let's break up the word and look at what it actually means. Photo meaning light and synthesis refers to the process of synthesizing or putting things together. So essentially what the concept is, is using light to put chemicals or molecules together. So plants use sunlight to turn water and carbon dioxide into glucose. And guys, if you look at glucose, the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And if you look at this very carefully, here you see both the elements of water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2, coming together to give you this gluco glucose molecule, which is a type of sugar. It's very important for us to know that Plants use glucose as a source of food for energy and as a building block for growing. And hence, plants rely on this glucose for growing. And ultimately, 
plants make the glucose on which our heterotrophs all rely on it. And hence, guys, photosynthesis is a fundamentally important process to sustain all forms of life. Why I say that? Because it's often only these organisms that have chloroplasts that can convert radiant energy into chemical energy that is then stored and it's then transferred through a food chain from one organism to the next. So if we were to take out all organisms that are capable of photosynthesizing, in actual fact, we will not be able to sustain the, the needs of energy for a growing uh, population on Earth. Regardless of whether we humans, animals, we all are dependent on plants or autotrophs that photosynthesize. Okay, so what is the importance? As I discussed, it makes organic molecules. And these organic molecules are essentially made out of inorganic molecules. And those inorganic molecules are your carbon dioxide and water molecules. All food chains begin with plants and thus it supports the processes of life. It also makes oxygen, which is an important gas. And without that, you know that most life forms on Earth will, be, will not be able to survive. Let's very quickly look at the site of photosynthesis. Where does photosynthesis occur? Guys, the leaf is an organ. When we looked at in grade 10, we looked at tissues, we looked at cells, we looked at tissues, and then we went on to organs. Guys, if you remember tissues, we discussed chloroplasts, we discussed that in the cell, and then we said that there were photosynthesizing tissues in the plant, which we called palisade mesophyll cells. These mesophyll cells are located in the leaf, and hence we regard the leaf as an organ of photosynthesis. Let's briefly look at the structure of the leaf and look at exactly where in the leaf photosynthesis exactly occurs. So guys, we know that leaves are organs and they generally are flattened cells or flattened structures that have cells that are called mesophyll cells. So when we take a cross section of a leaf, we see these vertically arranged cells on the upper surface. And these cells are densely saturated with organelles called chloroplast. And if we look at these chloroplast molecules in great detail under a microscope, we know that it is a molecule that is made up of it's a double membrane molecule. It's oval and it's got a whole stack of thylakoids that illustrate the, organelle, the cellular, the organelle structures in which photosynthesis occurs. Here's, here we have an illustration of a micrograph of the chloroplast. And hence we can see an illustration showing you these tract structures which is enlarged in a, in a very artistic impression of what the chloroplast is. Let's look at this in a bit of greater detail so that you exactly understand where the process of photosynthesis occurs and what is actually involved. It's very important for us to understand that the chloroplast is an organelle. And when we do look at, look at this organelle, guys, we need to understand that the organelle is an oval structure. And the feature of this is that it increases the surface area for it to be able to absorb sunlight. So essentially, it's a double membrane structure. It has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane as you see here. So we've got an outer membrane and an inner membrane through which contains the entire contents uh, of, the cyto of the chloroplast. We have a space between the inner and outer membrane that's called the inner intermembrane space. Guys, what is important to understand is the chloroplast is submerged the, by in a liquid called stroma, which is an aqueous fluid which suspends the thylakoids and the granums. So when we look at what the chloroplast is actually made up of. It is made up of these tubes, these, these blunt ended tubes that are stacked one on top of each other. And these stacked one on top of each other create the impression of a system of coins that are stacked on each other. And we refer to that stack as the granum, which is a stack of thylakoids. These grana are connected by each, to each other by intergranum lamellae, as you can see here. And inside them, we see a lumen which is essentially the contents of the thylakoid. And within these, th within these thylakoids, we find the green pigment called chlorophyll. chlorophyll. And it is the chlorophyll molecules that actually are able to trap the light to, to carry out the process of photosynthesis. So guys, if we look at the equation, it's very important that you should be able to write on the equation of photosynthesis. And often, the equation of photosynthesis does help you to define the process of photosynthesis. So in an equation, we always have the input, which is on the left-hand side, and we, that gives us the product. So we have the substances here that go in, the substrate molecules, 
and then we have the products. So essentially what we're looking at is what happens during the process of photosynthesis to produce the products. So we know that for photosynthesis we need carbon dioxide, we also need water, and without the energy from the sun, this process would not take place. And that energy is trapped by the chlorophyll pigments inside the chloroplast to produce the organic molecule called glucose, or in this case we call it a simple sugar, and it produces oxygen gas, which is a waste product that is given off into the atmosphere. So if we were to look at this equation and to define the process of photosynthesis, we can start with what is required, where it occurs, and what is produced. So let's look at this. So guys, how would you define photosynthesis? When we look at photosynthesis, we say that photosynthesis is a process that occurs in the chloroplast where energy from the sun converts carbon dioxide and water into simple organic glucose or sugar molecules and giving off oxygen as a waste product. I'll say that again. Photosynthesis is a process that occurs in the chloroplast where energy from the sun converts carbon dioxide and water into an organic molecule producing oxygen as a waste product. So the key concepts are the carbon dioxide, water, the energy from the sun producing the products, glucose and oxygen. I, I hope you guys have got that and what I'm saying is that you do not have to remember the definition, learn the equation and from that equation you can synthesize a definition. Guys, let's look at the key concepts in terms of the process or the phases of photosynthesis. What is important to remember is that photosynthesis occurs in a series of complex biochemical processes. So it's not just one process. There's a series of steps that are involved, but these steps essentially can be divided for our convenience into two phases. So we're going to look at photosynthesis today by studying it in two phases. These two phases are often referred to as the light phase or the light dependent phase and the light independent phase or the dark phase. And we often tend to, we often tend to use the word dark phase, but it's not it's not used in the correct sense. It does not mean that this is what occurs at night. What essentially it means is that this dark phase is independent of light, which means that no matter whether light is present or not, the products from the light phase are used to, in the light independent phase. So essentially what we're looking at are the two stages of, or two phases of photosynthesis. Here's an illustration that shows you the two stages. Here we've got, and I'm going to draw a line across this to, to separate out a stage that shows you light being utilized, and this occurs in the chloroplast, and that produces molecules of ATP and NADPH. I'm just going to erase this just for that purpose there, and NADPH. So here we see the light phase that produces ATP and NADP, and these molecules go into the second stage, which is the light independent stage. And here you can clearly see that illustrated. So we have the light dependent phase on this side. It produces ATP and NADP. And those molecules are then transferred into the light independent phase, which is often referred to as scientifically the Calvin cycle. And in that phase, we find the end products called glucose being produced and carbon and oxygen being given off. And here we will look at uh, and sorry, glucose being produced and water as a waste product being given out. We will look at the waste products of the first stage, which are called oxygen, which is which we see given off. But we need to discuss in, in further detail to understand the subtleties between the two stages. So guys, let's look at the light dependent or the light phase. This reaction of light phase occurs in the grana of the chloroplast, which contains chlorophyll. So firstly, we got to remember that it is occurring in the grana. So we looked at those stacked coins called the grana. This is essentially where the light phase or the light dependent phase occurs. In these grana you have chlorophyll molecules and these molecules absorb the light. When they absorb the light what happens next? The energy from the light is used in two ways. Namely it is used to form energy carrier molecules called ATP. And ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So tri meaning three and essentially it's a combination of ADP plus another phosphate molecule giving you A 
ATP. So the, this stage is responsible for the production of a, adenosine triphosphate and essentially it's a phosphate molecule that is added to adenosine diphosphate. It is used to split water molecules to release high energy um, hydrogen atoms and oxygen. So essentially what happens in, in this stage is that we find that ATP is produced, high energy hydrogen atoms are released and these high energy hydrogen atoms are relatively unstable and hence they are the energy source that are going to be used in the light independent phase. So these molecules are then transferred to the light independent phase through a coenzyme which we will discuss in a little while. And the oxygen guys that we have produced in this stage is given off as a waste product. Here, here it comes. The energy rich unstable hydrogen atoms, they combine with coenzymes which, sorry, which then take them into the dark phase and that energy is then utilized for the light independent phase. The oxygen that is released is then given off into the atmosphere via the stomatal pores as a byproduct. So that's essentially the light independent phase and what we've got to take note from this, it occurs in the grana, I'm just going to go back to this, it occurs in the grana, it produces ATP and hydrogen atoms and those hydrogen atoms are then carried by coenzymes to the dark phase and in that process it also produces oxygen as a waste product. Let's see what happens in the light independent phase and again I emphasize the word light independent phase because it essentially occurs in the absence of light or it does not depend on the light for this process to occur. So let's look at it. It's called the light independent phase and as I said the reaction of the dark phase takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. If we compare, compare that to the light dependent phase that took place in the grana. Here we're looking at this process occurring in the liquid medium around the chloroplast called the stroma. Carbon dioxide provides carbon and oxygen which combines with the high energy atoms to form of the light phase to form energy rich carbohydrates. So essentially what is happening here it is the CO2 plus the water with the energy from the ATP produces C6. Well I'm just skipping a few steps C6H12. I'm just going to erase this very quickly. C6H12 and uh, H12 mm -hmm. O6. So here we're seeing the glucose molecule being produced from carbon dioxide, water, and the energy from the hydrogen atoms that are coming from the light, light dependent phase. The high energy hydrogen atoms and the ATP from the light phase provide the required energy for this process. All the reactions of the dark phase are controlled by enzymes and hence the process is dependent on temperature and conditions that affect enzyme activity. So guys essentially what we've looked at is we've looked at the process now. I want you guys to have a short break and when we get back we're going to look at some questions and I want to engage with you. I'll give you an opportunity to work through these. So see you guys after the break. Welcome back guys. Hope you guys unwinded, um, took in some light. Let's get straight into the multiple choice questions of photosynthesis and I hope you guys are going to have some discussion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read through these questions. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes to work through these. As you're working through them, I'll sort of scroll back and forth with these questions and then we get back and we look at the solutions. So let's quickly read through them and then we'll do them with your colleagues at school. Activity 1, multiple choice question. Light energy is converted to chemical energy through the process of A. Photosynthesis, glycolysis, cellular respiration, D. Fermentation. Next question, number two. Photosynthesis takes place, takes what three things to create energy? A. Carbon dioxide, water and energy. B. Carbon monoxide, water and energy. C carbon monoxide, cytoplasm and energy or D, carbon dioxide, cytoplasm and energy. Quite confusing, read through them carefully. Let's move on to question 3. What is the name of the sugar that is formed during the process of photosynthesis? A, fructose, B, glucose, C, sucrose 
and D lactose. Question 4. Where are the pigments located in the chloroplast? A in the thylakoid, B in the mitochondria, C in the carotenoids, D in the chlorophyll. Question 5. What is ATP? An energy source for cells, for plants, B an energy source for animals, C a compound created by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or D an energy source for both plants and animals. So guys, I've read through these questions. I'm going to give you guys two minutes to work through them. And in this two minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to scroll up and down so that you can have these questions um, and you can engage with them. So two minutes, guys. Have a good discussion. Let's come back and solve these. Folks, I know you had some good discussions, some confusing options here, but let's work through them. I'm going to read these questions again. Light energy is converted into chemical energy through the process of... Guys, so we're dealing with photosynthesis, but I'm sure in, in an exam or test that my option might be various. So let's look at this. So we know that light energy is converted to chemical energy by the process of photosynthesis. Glycolysis is a process that we're going to deal with when we look at respiration and fermentation is also another process that we deal with respiration so the correct answer here is photosynthesis cool let's see if the second one gets a bit more challenging photosynthesis takes what three things to create energy so guys we need to look at what are the three requirements that are needed for photosynthesis to produce energy so let's look at the options carbon dioxide water and energy possibly Carbon monoxide, definitely not. We know that carbon monoxide, so we can very quickly eliminate the two. What, are we, what else? What's our third option? The last option. Carbon dioxide, cytoplasm, and energy. Guys, we know that the cytoplasm is not where photosynthesis occurs. It occurs in the chloroplast, and hence, if that was the chloroplast, it could have created a bit of doubt for us. And hence, we know that the first option is the correct option. We need water, we need CO2, and energy, and that is energy from the sun. To produce, photosynth to produce carbohydrates. So if you got that done, right, correct, well done. What is the name of the sugar that is formed during photosynthesis? Guys, throughout this lesson so far, I've referred to the sugar being a simple sugar. And if you look at this, guys, the, the simpler sugar, and this takes us back to grade 10, your monosaccharides. So the simpler sugar that is produced is glucose. And this is a simple carbohydrate that is in the formula of C6 h 12 o 6 so it's a monosaccharide and hence we need to 
acknowledge that glucose is the simplest sugar that is produced by plants. Let's move on to the next question. Where are the pigments located in the chloroplast? So here we're looking at the chloroplast and we've looked at where the process of photosynthesis occurs and we said that the light phase occurs when these structures called the grana absorb light. So where is the pigment which is called chlorophyll located in? So is it in the thylakoid? Is it in the mitochondria? Definitely not. Carotenoids? No. In the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a pigment so that's not. So it is in the thylakoids. So that correct answer is the thylakoids. And finally the last question. What is ATP? And as I said that ATP is adenine, adenosine diphosphate plus a phosphate molecule giving you adenosine triphosphate. So it has three phosphate molecules joined together. And this is an energy carrier molecule. So what is it? It's an energy, so it's an energy source for plants. Mm -hmm. It's an energy source for animals. Mm -hmm. No, I doubt. A compound created by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Definitely not. It's an energy source for both plants and animals. And definitely, both plants and animals require that. So guys, even in the mitochondria, we have energy that is required, by, uh, that is produced by, as, uh, in the cells, and that is in, stored in the form of ATP. It's an energy-rich carrier molecule that is required by both plants and animals for the process of respiration, which again is an essential part that photosynthesis leads to. So well done to you if you've got these correct. So here I've got the terms and give the correct terminology for each of the following definitions. So what I've done is I've put in the solutions so that it can help us to go through these and that it makes it easier for you when you are studying so that you can link these very quickly. So more or less we're looking at these as definitions and terminology. The major source of energy in the cell guys is ATP. So if I were, if I were asked what is ATP, I would be able to describe it as the major source of energy in the cell. The green pigment found in green plants that traps the sun's energy. And that pigment, guys, we know is called chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is what gives a plant the green color and it is essentially able to absorb light uh, of different frequencies and that's based on the types of chlorophyll molecules there are in plant in, in, in the chloroplast. There's A, B and they absorb different wavelengths of light and that pigment is called chlorophyll. A system of flat dislike sacs within the chloroplast and that's what we've been talking about so it refers to these flat structures that are stacked one on top of the other and we refer to that as the grana or the granum. The kind of energy stored in starch molecules so essentially what happens in the photosynthesis process is that chemical energy is produced when energy from the sun converts the essential inorganic compounds to chemical energy so we say that starch molecule contains chemical energy and that energy is then transferred, it's used to produce more energy either in the form of movement, mechanical energy or even kinetic energy. 2.5, the opening on the leaf that controls the entry and exit of gas. And you recollect this from grade 10, we know that the gases, gases exchange or the process of transpiration occurs through the stomata and that opening is called the stomatal opening or the stoma. And that's essentially what controls the process of gases entering or even the loss of water from a cell, from a plant. The liquid matrix of chloroplast. Guys, we looked at the structure of the chloroplast early on. We said that the, the, the structures within the chloroplast are embedded in a medium called the stroma. And that is the medium in which the second stage of the light independent phase of photosynthesis occurs. 2.7. The elongated cells in the leaf that are packed with chloroplast. If you go back to grade 10 and if you look at the structure of the leaf, we looked at these elongated cells on the ventrals on, on the upper surface of the leaf. And these cells are dotted with large concentrations of chloroplast. And we refer to these cells, these vertically arranged cells, as palisade mesophyll cells. And essentially they are adapted and structurally suited, suited to absorb maximum amount of light on the upper surface of the leaf. And then finally, the tissue that transports soluble food in plants, taking us back to grade 10, guys, you know that they have, plants are vascular and they contain vascular tissue. The two types of vascular tissues are xylem and phloem, and these two tissues are essentially important for the transportation of water from the, from the roots to the leaves for photosynthesis. But we also have a system that produces the co organic compounds that take them back 
to the rest of the plant and that vascular tissue or that transport tissue is referred to as the phloem tissue. So well done if you've got those correct. Guys, we're going to take on some different questions in which we're going to try and then extend ourselves into applying the process and the concepts of photosynthesis. So let's very quickly look at this diagram. Study the diagram below which shows a model of the process of photosynthesis and answer the questions. Let's look at this. Something very different to what you'd normally see. So we normally see organelles and here we're seeing a mechanical diagram which is kind of an illustration that tries to show what is happening in the cell. Here we're seeing the sun. We, seem, we are looking at some structure that is called, that is spinning. It's labeled the light reaction and here we're seeing some illustration that is showing what is produced in the light reaction going into the dark reaction. We're seeing arrows here which are being released or given off. We're seeing arrows here going into that. So a mechanical process in which you're seeing an input, an output, and you're seeing a system of ch reactions occurring to produce uh, the products. So let's look at this in view of it being related to the process of photosynthesis. Cool. So what organelle in a green plant is represented by structure labeled 1? So I'm going to jump back to the diagram. So if we look at structure label 1, let's try and label this. What organelle is represented by structure label 1? And guys, if we look at this, you can see here the light is being absorbed or it's targeting this organelle. So that's definitely going to be, what do we use in, in photosynthesis? The organelle would be the chloroplast. And essentially this illustration is showing the chloroplast. Cool. So if you did get that, well done. What is the substance in plant cells that transfers the hydrogen of the light reaction into the dark reaction? So guys, if you recollect, we looked at different uh, products produced in the first stage. We said one of the things that are produced is those high energy hydrogen atoms. And those high energy hydrogen atoms are transferred to the dark phase or the independent phase by coenzyme. And this is coenzyme NADP. And plus a hydrogen, it becomes NADPH, which is then transferred in it. So we're looking at a coenzyme, and that coenzyme is called NADP. Cool. Which gas is released to, through part A? Let's go back to that diagram. Here we're seeing the first step and of the light reaction, and we're seeing something given off. And guys, you know that during this stage, the gas that is given off would be oxygen. And here we're looking at the dark reaction, we know that what is the input there would be CO2, carbon dioxide. And I could very quickly label this at whilst I'm here. The dark reaction produces, uh, let's see, this would be glucose. So we're seeing the glucose molecule being produced. Here we're seeing water coming in. We're seeing light energy. Here we're getting water. Uh, here we're going to get oxygen being given off and we're getting the ATP and the NADPH that are going through into the next reaction. Cool. Let's tackle some more of these questions. Which compound does this gas originally come from? So if we go back to this diagram, so where does this water molecule that we labeled here come from? Guys, remember that we spoke about water, H2O. So if we take the water molecule and we split this up, and we remove the hydrogen and we send that into the dark reaction, we have this oxygen molecule that is then released as a waste product. So essentially, the oxygen molecule that is coming as a waste product or being produced as a waste product in the light phase is actually when water molecules are broken up, they lose the oxygen and the hydrogen molecules then go into the dark phase or the light independent phase. 3.5. Name the substance that enters from enters part B from the atmosphere and we just did that guys if you look at part B it's the carbon dioxide that enters and that's via the stomatal pores that enters the stomata uh, into the leaf and that is used in the Calvin cycle or the dark phase or the independent uh, light independent reaction name the substance that eventually results from the dark reaction and if we go back to this diagram here I just illustrated that at the bottom the product that is produced in the light independent phase of the dark reaction is called glucose. So guys, we've tackled a very nice question, very different illustration of the actual process of photosynthesis. 
I, I want you guys to have a short break. And when we get back in the last segment, we're going to look at some more questions. So have a short break, freshen up, and let's get back to it. Welcome back, folks. Hope you had a good stretch. Uh, let's get straight to the last question. Another segment, we're going to tackle some more questions, but are these a little higher order thinking questions? So I need you guys to be focused. Have a good discussion. I'll give you an opportunity to chat to your friends and to work out some of these questions. Let's look at the question. Study the diagram below that shows different phases of photosynthesis and answer the questions that follow. So essentially what the diagram shows is, if we look at this, here we're seeing a different illustration. It shows you light. It shows you the light reaction here. And here we're seeing the Kelvin cycle or the light independent phase. And we call that the dark phase. And I, I don't like using the word dark phase. I'd rather use the light independent phase. And that's the light independent phase. And here we see the products that are being produced. Here we need water. It's producing carbon oxygen as a waste product. Here we're seeing ATP and NADP being produced in the light reaction that then go into the Kelvin cycle or the light independent phase. And here we're seeing the products of photosynthesis being produced and carbon dioxide being needed for that. So cool, let's look at some of the questions that relate to this. So guys, I'm going to read through these questions. I'm going to, I'm going to scroll through them and then I'm going to give you about three minutes to work through these and then we get back and we're going to work through some of these solutions. So let's look at the questions, 4.1.1. In the light dependent phase, mention where it takes place, 4.1.2, name of the molecule that are able to absorb light energy, 4.1.3, the two end products which are both used in the next phase, 4.1.4, the type of energy in which each, in which light energy is transformed. Okay, so guys, these questions are there for you to look at. I'm going to scroll back to my diagram. I'm going to give you two minutes to work through these. And when you get back, we're going to look at some of these answers. So welcome back guys, I'm sure you had a good discussion. Let's get into these solutions. So I'm going to go through these. 4.1.1, where in the cell does this take place? So the question here was, let's see, where does it take place guys? Remember that the process of photosynthesis occurs in the thylakoids or in the granum. So if you, if you said thylakoids or granum, you'd get that correct. Let's look at the next question. Name of the molecule that are able to absorb 
light energy. And if you recollect, we've discussed this already. It's the chloroplasts, and they contain the pigment that are able to absorb the light energy. 413. The two end products which are both used in the next phase. And guys, what are the two end products? If we go back to that illustration, what do we see as the end products of the first phase? So what are the end products used? Here, if you look at the end products, we have high energy ATP molecule, and that we clearly see here. And we also see that there's hydrogen, which is combined with the coenzyme NADPH. So it's NADPH and ATP that go into the light independent phase. So let's get straight to that answer. And we can click on the solution for you guys to have a look at. So it's ATP and the hydrogen, and which combines with the, as I said, with the NADP um, coenzyme. Name the energy into which light energy is transformed. And guys, this is about transfer and transformation of energy. We know that light energy is energy that's radiant energy, and that energy is converted by the process of photosynthesis into chemical energy. So that answer would be chemical energy. Let's look at more questions on this section. Okay, so we're going to get through 4.2. Where in the cell does the second phase of photosynthesis occur? So this relates to, we looked at the diagram, we said here we're looking at two phases, the light dependent phase and the light independent phase. So where in the cell does the second phase of photosynthesis occur? If you guys maybe quickly chat to your friends, you remember that it does occur in Yes, it occurs in the, let's see, in the stroma, in the liquid medium. As I discussed this early on, one of the characteristics of the light independent phase is that it occurs in the stroma. But the light dependent phase occurs in the grana. And I said it was those stacks of coins into which a light is absorbed, which produces the ATP and the, and the high energy atoms that then go into the light independent phase, which is the stroma, the liquid medium of the chloroplast. 4.3. Okay. So name the raw materials used in this phase, not the two products that are used from the light independent, light dependent phase. So what are the raw materials that are used in this? So if I want to go back to that diagram very quickly, we can look at it. So what are the raw materials that are required in this stage? So definitely what we're seeing here, it's carbon dioxide, but it says what are the two raw materials? So let's think about that very carefully. Okay. So let's get back to that question. Where are we? We're here. So let's click on the answers. Let's see. So it's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is that raw material. Okay. It's not those two products that we were just relating to that are produced in the light dependent phase. 4.4. Name the monosaccharide formed in this phase. So essentially it's asking what is produced in the light independent phase and that monosaccharide as we discussed earlier on is the glucose molecule. And that glucose molecule is a, the simplest sugar that the plant can actually produce. Cool. Let's look at the next question. Many of these molecules will be broken down to release energy. What is this reaction called and where does it occur? So guys, we, the, it leads us to the next chapter, but it's ideal that we ask this question now. So what happens to all the glucose that is produced and what process is it used in? It's very important to remember that Plants essentially need energy, and that energy is used for the process of respiration. And respiration is a process that produces the energy required by the mitochondria to carry out functioning of both plants and animal cells. So essentially what we're saying is that this process occurs where glucose is broken down. It's called glycolysis or glycolysis, where glucose is split up, and that energy is then, it occurs, it's released, and it occurs in the organelle known as the mitochondria. So it's very important that we understand. And often there's a link, and you'll see that when we do that in the next e couple episodes, we're going to look at the structure of the mitochondria, we're going to compare that to the chloroplast, and see the interrelatedness between these two organelles. Guys, I've got one final question. I'm going to get through that, and then we're going to have an overview of this lesson. So again, we move on through the, this diagram, but it relates to whatever we, we've been doing thus far. So the question reads, Monosaccharides are soluble and are therefore unsuitable for storage. In what form do plants store the products of photosynthesis and in which organelle? So this is a two-mark question. So I'll read the question again. I'll try to explain the question so that you 
understand exactly what. So the question is, glucose is an unstable molecule. We know that glucose is soluble. And plants uh, do not have the ability to utilize that glucose all the time. And hence, they need to store that glucose. And that glucose is stored so that plants that are developing, it's stored for future use, it's stored in seeds, it's stored as a reserve energy source. So how is that glucose stored? Knowing that glucose is soluble, what are the, some of the challenges that plants have with storing a soluble molecule? One, one is that that soluble molecule could be dissolved, it could, be, it could actually be lost due to osmosis. It, so the plants need to convert that oxygen, uh, sorry, that glucose molecule into a molecule so that it can be stored. And we know that plants cells have a large vacuole and that vacuole often have starch granules. So we say that this glucose is converted and stored into a polysaccharide called starch. And these starch granules are actually a polysaccharide. So, it's a, so glucose being a monosaccharide, it's converted to starch. And these starch granules are a, a polysaccharide. And we, by that I mean it's a complex molecule. It is not a simple. And what is unique about the polysaccharide molecule is that it is osmotically inactive. And that simply means that it can be stored in the plant in an inactive form without affecting osmosis. And that's essentially very important. So it does not affect osmosis and hence the vacuole can maintain its shape and give the plant cell support based on the fact that the starch granules are stored, they are osmotically in inactive and hence do not affect the movement or the the movement or the entry of substances into the cell. And hence, the plant can still absorb water and nutrients without it being affected by the solute potential or the solute content of starch. So guys, we've looked at the process of photosynthesis. I'm very quickly going to give you an overview of this. In this lesson, we've, list, we've looked at the requirements of photosynthesis. We've looked at where it occurs. We looked at the structure of a leaf, basically, and we discussed some questions relating to that. And one final question that I'm going to leave you with. If you're able to define the process of photosynthesis, what is the easiest way to do that? And as I said at the start of the lesson, you need to remember the equation. And the equation is quite simple. We looked at what are the products, what is needed, and what is produced. So we know that the products are glucose and oxygen. And what is needed for the process is we needed carbon dioxide, we needed water, and that occurs in the organelle known as the chloroplast and for that we need radiant energy. So you can look at the equation and synthesize the definition for the process of photosynthesis. So guys from my side, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I need you guys to tune in next week when we discuss some problems and we look at how photosynthesis is applied in an experiment and we analyze that. From my side guys, I hope you've enjoyed my lesson. Take care, work hard, work smart.